depression can be an emotion that's experienced by caregivers due to the continual responsibility of care of these folks. And another uh, great source of emotional uh, stress is the grief that as a caregiver you experience with the decline in the person that you care so very much about. I've invited three individuals to come and join me in a panel discussion to talk about the sources of stress that they've experienced in uh, caring for people with dementia and will talk then about some of the strategies that they have used and continue to use to help cope with that. Please watch with me. First, I'd like to ask each of you if you could uh, tell a little bit about yourself and what gives you the uh, authority to speak on this subject. You want to start, Monica? Sure. I've been a nursing assistant for um, 20 years now, and the last five years have worked in assisted living and with demented patients. I'm new at this. I've only been doing it for about three years. However, um, I helped take care of my grandma who had Alzheimer's. My mother took care of her for 10 years. And so it uh, uh, gave me a caring heart for these type, type of people. And I have, um, along with my sisters, taken care of my father for the, uh, the past year. And uh, we've experienced a lot of different things and, uh, throughout that year to, to help him along with the uh, the, with the, the disease that he has. We pretty much rearranged our lives around him so we could keep him in his home environment so that uh, he would, you know, feel a lot better about uh, uh, about his situation. What is it that in your experience is so stressful or some of the main stresses of dealing with people with dementia? Um, on a given day, we don't know what our residents will be like, um, depending on their day and their dementia. Um, could be a, a happy day or it could be a very um, stressful, combative day. You know, it, it depends on how the resident feels that given day. The good thing about it is that a lot of times they are so, they can be combative and so, they can be crabby. And then it turns into a smile and you just forget about what you just went through. I mean, because they can be so sweet. All within a matter of minutes. You're crabby one minute and just, they smile at you and they love you and they say so. And it just makes it all worth it. And uh, generally the, uh, the care for them, um, it's, it's something that uh, from day to day, uh, you're doing a lot more one day and a lot less uh, the next. I remember the episodes of uh, clean clothes versus uh, dirty clothes. and and uh, that challenge of making sure that that's taken care of for them. Um, what would you consider of, of the stresses that you've experienced? What would be considered some of the, the biggest ones, the biggest challenges that you see in, in caring for these folks? Um, incontinence can be a problem, and bowel movements can be a major problem. You know, you can just walk in and just it's everywhere or all over the bed. I mean, just one of those things that you learn to handle, you know, it goes away, you have to clean it up. But it's also frustrating for them and stressful because they know they're doing this and they have no control over it. And they just feel like, um, a lot of times I think they feel like we are taking care of them and that's hard for them to admit that we have to take care of these people even themselves mm -hmm. because we are usually much younger than they are. And so mm -hmm. it's hard for them admit that we have to care for these people, mm -hmm. for them. Okay. I was just thinking you know, mealtime can be very frustrating also, the not wanting to eat or saying I've already eaten and they don't remember that they haven't had their meal mm -hmm. or too. still being hungry after having had a full meal mm -hmm. and you know they start rummaging for things to eat and, and mm -hmm. so um, you know, those kinds of things can make a day real frustrating. I think you had mentioned also, Monica, about um, their modesty and bathing. Uh, modesty and bathing, um, taking your clothes off, having to be in water. Um, a lot of people with dementia are just afraid of water. Um, and, and as you and I, we, we wouldn't want to be undressed by someone else that we don't recognize. 
um, can be very stressful for them and for the caregiver to to have to do that. You know, to have to undress someone that you don't know, and to do it so that they aren't embarrassed. Um, it, it, there's just a real stress between both people. Chances are they've never been seen naked by anybody but their mate, so to speak. So it's hard. You have to be very sensitive to that when you're taking care of them. Okay. Charles? And sometimes it's uh, it's hard on the the, uh, the caregiver too. Is uh, in in our case, uh, it was my father and some of my sisters had uh, difficulties in overcoming that that they had to to do different things now, and uh, it's overcoming. Uh, you have to be creative so you don't wind up um, uh, causing more confusion and uh, you have to repeat things and and make sure that they're you know they're, they're taken care of that way that they're not frustrated. You had mentioned earlier about your sisters having to do personal cares with your father and getting over the barrier of, of their having to oh, pro provide cares that usually children don't do for their parents. Right, uh, because I have a couple of my sisters, they've, they've taken care of other people, uh, but when it came to taking care of their own father, it was a little different experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the type of things that you have to, to overcome. And uh, in his case, it was a little bit um, easier uh, to do, because he was a little resistant in the very beginning, but. It just got better and better as we, we went along. Uh, but uh, you take on a different role. And, and when you take on a different role, sometimes, you know, it's, it's just hard to adjust. And they made the adjustment. Given all the stresses of dealing with patients with dementia, I'd like to ask you, what do you do for yourself to help cope with, with these folks? Um, being able to share some of the frustration with other staff members. Um, if, if there's a, if you're with a resident in and they're argumentative or combative, we can always step away and have someone else step in. So it's it's nice to have other staff members to to share that with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just have, for some reason that day they're just really not liking you very much. So if you just step out and somebody steps in, I mean that works too sometimes. You know, they're just. Mm -hmm. For some reason, that day, they're not their favorite. And, and in, in our case, it was it was prayer. Uh, prayer helps a lot. It's, Absolutely. You can't, uh, it's never, you can't overrate it. You have to, um, to learn that, uh, that this is, a, this is something that they, they cannot control. Uh, the judgment is uh, impaired, and you're going to have to help them along with that. So. And I would say a good sense of humor. Laughter when appropriate. Right. Heck, cry we when appropriate. Yeah. Right. We, do that too. <laughs> we do a lot of that too. Yeah. Um, it just and having patience. You mentioned uh, a little bit about families. Was that is that a source of, of stress for you as well, caregivers? It can be a source of strength and it can be a source of stress, um, depending depending on the family and their understanding of. Um, their loved one's disease. Um, if they have good knowledge and, and um, that makes it easier for us to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're in denial of, of where their loved one is at as far as their dementia, then sometimes it's quite difficult to um, provide the kind of cares that we would like to provide. Mm -hmm. Sometimes okay. it's hard for them to admit that their parents need this type of care and that they're slipping away from them from, you know, before the very, very eyes. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Charles, you mentioned something about another thing that you can do for yourself. You mentioned earlier the um, getting education and, and the uh, support groups. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, how that might have helped? Sure. Um, I, I've gotten information off of the Internet. Uh, there are books out there and pamphlets out there, uh, focus groups, and you have to